Welcome to Scorched Earth. Now, I've beaten this map plenty of times before, without dying or with some silly creature that no one else would think of using, but I wanted to do something never had been done before. Now, last year I did a 100 days no damage video, but that utilised a life system. This would be very different. I have zero lifelines and 0.1 HP, meaning a single speck of damage being taken would result in a complete restart of the challenge. So, could Arc Scorched Earth be beaten without taking damage? Let's find out. Oh, and if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Spawning in the fiery desert of Scorched Earth, I was confronted with the first problem. I was already hot. This meant that before the true heat of the day set in, I would have to pump fortitude to crazy high levels to just survive. If I was to overheat for just a second, it would mean a complete restart of the challenge. To get those early game levels, I picked some bushes, and then unlocked the engrams for cloth, which would give me a slight hyperthermic insulation boost. Sadly, the first run came to an unfortunate end, when I was in the middle of thanking some gifted subs on Twitch, and a raptor found me hiding behind a rock. While I'm on that subject, I would just like to say that this whole challenge was streamed over on Twitch to hundreds of viewers, so do come on over and join the fun there, I'll put my link in the description below. The start of Scorched Earth is a brutal affair, and even more brutal when you have 0.1 HP. I had to focus on levelling up and pumping that fortitude, all while dealing with a draining water supply, hostile mobs around every corner, and a rapidly increasing temperature by the minute. On attempt 8, I did get my first tame when a Pego Mastax flung itself at me, and I accidentally tamed it. Had I not had berries in my hotbar, this would have actually been an automatic death. Now, the only way that I could get started on this challenge was by either taming a moss chops or an equus, as these tames could be tamed passively, and I would then be able to gather thatch and wood. On attempt 8, I did manage to find an equus, but I messed up and startled it, just before I could shove the medjo berry inside it. On attempt 9, however, close to green obelisk, I ran into a moss chops level 95. At first, I thought it was too much of a picky eater for me to tame, yet my chat alerted to me that you can actually gather rare mushrooms from the silk flowers, and after a couple of minutes, I did manage to get one. With a singular mushroom in my possession, I could now get my hands on the moss chops, and truly get the first proper run started. Outside of now being able to gather thatch and wood, the moss chops meant that I was on a dino, and safe from the majority of wildlife that could have ruined my run at any point. With finally some wood and thatch in my possession, I made myself up a pick, so I could harvest some materials. However, before I could go too far, the heat of the day set in, and despite my already heavily pumped fortitude, I was hot once more. I decided to make myself a tent, as it would stop me from overheating. After placing it down, I camped out the heat of the day, before re-emerging as the cooler night set in. Safe from the heat for now, I decided to set about doing some farming. I gathered some cactus sap, as well as some stone and some sand, and I then made myself a refining forge, as I was need to get some metal smelting as soon as possible. I placed the forge down on a singular foundation, and then set about mining up some metal. Now, level 70, I was already up to 128 fortitude. I had barely touched a single other stat, as I knew how harsh the weather conditions could be on Scorched Earth. I made myself up a mortar and pestle, and set about making up some clay, with the aim of making myself an adobe house. First though, I made and placed down a smithy, which I used to make up myself some desert cloth, which would help to keep me cool. I now had enough clay to start making some adobe structures, so after doing that and placing down what I had thus far, I tamed myself up a jaboa, which would be incredibly useful for warning me of any heat waves or sandstorms that might be coming in. I then bowled myself a moth, in the hope of using it as my first flyer, before a terror bird took this opportunity to get himself a free snack. I then tamed up a Procoptodon, which was stuck in this rock over here. Now, a Procoptodon would give me the ability to quickly traverse the map, as while a moss chops was a good start to tame, getting anywhere on this thing would take an absolute age. But what I really wanted was a Phylocaleo. A Phyla would be the perfect animal to get around the map on. It was quick, relatively strong, and could climb walls. It was also the perfect cave dino, as I would need to get three artifacts to defeat the manticore at the end of this challenge. In the desert, I found myself this level 20 filer. I sat on my moss chops and began tranking it out. Luckily, moss chopses are actually surprisingly tanky, and I was able to finish KOing him with a decent amount of HP on my moss chops left. I then turned the filer up and began to immediately speed away from the scene, as I had spotted a rogue poison wyvern lurking in the nearby vicinity. At base, I made myself a filer saddle, before setting out on the new filer to the nearby mountain, where I knocked out a low-level Argentavis, and also gathered myself some crystal, which I used to make an awesome spyglass and some dino storage balls. Good time to mention the three mods that I used were Structures Plus, Dino Storage, and Awesome Spyglass, all of which are pretty much part of any challenge that I do. My Jaboa had started to make some questionable noises, so while the Argy tamed, I popped down my portable tent and hid away. It turned out it was just an electrical storm, so I cryoed up the Argentavis and returned to base. At base, I unlocked a large bear trap and made a few up, before heading out to look for a rex. 
I didn't want to spend too much time messing around, as when you only have 0.1 HP, danger is literally around every corner. Scorched isn't known for its higher level spawns, but it is actually a good place to tame Rexes, as there is an area in the desert which has about 3 Rex spawns and automatically spawns another one the moment that you kill a Rex. Sure enough, it didn't take me too long to find a Rex that I would happily take. After tracking down this 130, I placed down some stone dinosaur gateways, with a large bear trap alongside it, to help trap the Rex. After a little bit of convincing, I did manage to get the Rex into the trap, and it was now time to trank it out, which with my primitive crossbow would be a little bit of an ordeal. But I patiently sat on my filer while smashing the Rex with trank arrows, and waited for him to fall asleep. After he was out, I tamed him up, and everything was looking incredibly promising, until I made the absolute ultimate mistake. That's not bad, 30 and 27, I'll, I'll... well, okay. So let's take a look at what happened here. I went to soul ball up the Rex, and instead of selecting the soul ball, I selected the spoiled meat which was located right next to it in the inventory. This of course instantly killed me, and after looking so promising, hours of hard work was lost just like that. So with no other option, I powered on. Spawning back into the desert with a brand new character, I was reminded how hard the start of this challenge really was, and what an uphill challenge I faced to get back to where I originally was. I tamed a couple of Pegomastax, but was then slaughtered by a direwolf at Green Obelisk when being forced to collect some water. On attempts 11, 12 and 13, I was slaughtered by the not so friendly wildlife that inhabits Scorched as soon as I attempted to get going. Now attempt 14 did get off to a promising start, as I managed to locate a moss drops on Green Obelisk and tamed him up. I thought we were onto something here, only for me to die to the heat as I hadn't prioritised levelling and that meant I didn't have enough fortitude. On attempt 15, I tracked down an Equus and started the taming process. All was going well until we ran into a nearby raptor who had both me and the horse for his breakfast. Attempt 16 was really the point where my mental sanity was starting to take a dive. What? Hey! He's just spawned out of the air! The next attempt, however, would prove to be a good one. I managed to tame not just any horse, but a 150 horse, which had some serious power on it. I tamed myself up a Jaboa and put down a forge to smelt some metal with. With the horse's kick ability, I managed to knock out a Deodon easily and tamed him up. The ability to do torpor to wildlife meant that the horse had a big advantage over the moss chops in the tier of starter dinos. After building my starter adobe base, I used this torpor attack on my horse to knock out a filer, who back at base I made a saddle for. This run seemed to have all the promise in the world, only for my arch nemesis to put an end to it. Oh. Oh! oh, I hate that dino man! With the Microraptor crushing my hopes and dreams, I took a break for the rest of the day and came back fresh the very next day. Attempt 18, my lucky number, would it be the one? I got off to a good start as I found a horse early on and tamed him up. However, when attempting to knock out a terror bird, my precious Equus fell asleep from high torpor. Now, clearly this terror bird was on the verge of being knocked out as he started sprinting away himself. However, he never did get knocked out and soon returned to the scene of the crime and finished my horse off. He then came looking for me. Terrified, I hid under this rock, which appeared to be the best camouflage arc has ever seen, as the terror bird walked right into me at one stage, but didn't react whatsoever. I must have stayed under this rock motionless for about 10 minutes before finally braving it and sprinting away. Somehow, I was still alive, but this whole ordeal would be a complete waste of time if I didn't go and make something from it. My starter horse had been named The Run, and I was determined that this would indeed be The Run. I might have lost the horse, but I still had the early game tools that I had made when I first got him, so we went quite back to square one. In fact, as the first night dawned, we were actually making some excellent progress. I had set up a smithy after getting some metal smelting, and then managed to bowler and knock out a direwolf. After taming him up, I was now back in the game and had a tame to use. That night, a heatwave struck, but because the nights are generally quite cool on Scorched, it actually wasn't a threat to me at all. That of course helped by the whopping 138 fortitude that I had amassed. The next morning the heatwave had passed, and I managed to tame myself a Pegomastax by accident, as it stole some Mejo Berries from my hotbar. I then tamed a Jaboa as I wanted to make sure that I'd be warned of any possible incoming heat waves, or even the sandstorms which can be credibly annoying. I then used my Direwolf as a meat shield as I fired Trank Arrows at this level 20 filer from his back. With the filer still taming, I decided to pursue a change of strategy in this run, and immediately focused on getting myself an Argentavis. I had come to the conclusion that Scorched Earth just had way too many liabilities when it came to creatures close to the ground, whether that was Capros, Pegos, or indeed the dreaded Microraptor. By taking to the air, apart from the odd wandering wyvern, I wouldn't have to worry about nearly as much. So, with my mighty level 15 Argentavis in my possession, I flew back home. Now that I had a flyer in my possession, I decided that I would move my base up to the pillar, far away from the dangers of the ground. But first, I went after our first artifact, choosing to try and get some before I tamed any Rexes. 
The first artifact was located in the church cave and was probably the most challenging cave that I'd have to do. The main dangers inside this cave was of course the Arthoplorers, which would one-shot me if their spit attack landed. Another danger was of course the Onyx, which had a 10% chance of giving me Mega Rabies and ending the run right there. Then of course on top of that you had the Rubble Golems and Death Pits, which are all pretty scary. After managing to kite the Golems away from the entrance, after a short while the artifact did spawn and I grabbed our first artifact, which was the artifact of the Gatekeeper. I still had to get out of the cave however, which was pretty scary as the hallways had now spawned a ton of dinos when I was getting the artifact. Good old Ark single player spawns for you. I narrowly avoided the Alpha Plurus and thankfully managed not to contact Mega Rabies as I escaped the cave. Back in the desert, I decided to tame an Anki, as this would harvest metal rocks much more efficiently for me. I knocked the Anki out just below base as he did manage to wander off when high on Torpor. I then set about putting my starter thatch foundations down. I would of course have to make this into a proper adobe base as soon as possible, but first I had a lot of farming to do. I took the Anki down below base where there was quite a few metal nodes and I was pleased to see that it was getting a decent amount of metal. I then placed down two refining forges and some mortar and pestles before getting to work on our clay mining. After a short while, I had successfully managed to get myself a full adobe base, which would be very useful if any unexpected heat waves was a hit. I then had to make some cementing paste, as I wanted to make some billboards to trap a rex. Originally the plan had always been to grab all the artifacts before I went for rexes this time, but on my way to the church cave I had seen this level 115 rex, so I opted to try and tame him. Now a level 115 rex wasn't great, but since it was only the Gamma Manticore we were going for, I thought that we would do just fine as a starter breeder. I knocked it out which took quite a while with my primitive crossbows, but eventually it did hit the deck. I waited over the hill for it to finish taming and then jumped for joy when I saw it was ready to go. Thankfully this time I didn't manage to eat any spoiled meat. After taming the Rex I went after the next artifact, which was located in what is known as Central Cave. This cave was honestly pretty drama free, it seems that the spawns are fairly low in this cave compared to some of the others and I just ran right down to the bottom where I picked up the artifact of the gatekeeper. The last cave was located in the mountains near Blue Obelisk. After flying there with Rory the Argentavis, I raced through the cave on the filer. The scariest moment of this cave was actually when I was forced to fight an Onik at the end of the cave but thankfully it didn't have Mega Rabies and we took it out with no problem. After killing a couple of direwolves that also wanted to scrap, the artifact of the crag spawned and we now had all three scorched earth artifacts in our possession. It was all starting to get very real now that this could actually be the run. Back at base we were in the end game, so I unlocked absorbent substrate and a gas mask. I would need to craft a gas mask in order for me to survive the manticore fight, but before dealing with that problem I headed back out into the desert to look for a female rex. Originally I had planned to try and tame a good level 1, but after spending about 10 minutes flying back and forth on my RG, in the end I just settled for this level 10 female. I of course wouldn't be taking any offspring in without the good stats from the male, but it would allow me at least to start breeding some baby boss rexes. Once the rex was tamed, I threw them both out on the top of my pillar and got them to start mating. Soon enough they were producing rex eggs, but I didn't have the necessary facilities to hatch any yet, so I set about making a fabricator, which I was going to have to do anyway to make some gas masks, in the intention of making an air conditioner. I grabbed some polymer from a nearby mantis in the desert and then made myself up an aircon. With the first set of rexes hatched, I cried them all up as even the ones without the best stats, I would simply kill for XP on my adult boss rexes. This is how I would level all my boss rexes up to the experience that I needed to take on the manticore. The stats were honestly pretty horrific, but the main danger with the manticore is actually the torpor attack it does, rather than its main DPS bite, so I wasn't overly concerned with breeding some super rexes. That evening I placed down a feeding trough and then when flying back home from the mountain on my Argentavis, we had another heat wave. I had of course known it was coming thanks to my Jaboa, but I was also correct in thinking that because it was night time once more, it wasn't really anything to worry about, especially with my crazy high fortitude stat. At base I levelled up my rexes with some passive XP they had generated and then set about claiming some more rexes with the good stats. I wanted about 10 or more rexes to go into the fight just so that I felt comfortable. The army was quickly growing so I did a bit of levelling by slaughtering some babies. A little note that I thought I'd show is that how paranoid I was about taking damage is that I made parachutes as sometimes when you fall off the back of a Rex's back you might take the slightest bit of fall damage and of course we could not risk that. Not today. Because I now had females with the good stats we were quickly producing Rexes over and over with the top tier stats and we soon reached a point where we had enough Rexes. I would now need to get some black pearls to make some absorbent substrate with. The only way to get black pearls on scorched earth is to kill death worms. Killing the death worms wasn't too bad as they went down relatively easy with my rex even though I did have to do some force feeding in between the kills. The problem was was that black pearls were a rare drop and only dropped a small percentage of the time. So I killed a death worm after death worm in an effort to get 8 black pearls. My mood wasn't exactly helped when I was given 7 black pearls from the first death worm like come on Ark please. Eventually though we did gather some more and we now had enough to make the substrate. 
So Rory and I flew back to base and we gathered some organic polymer on the way, which I used to make a chemistry bench back at base. I still however needed some sap to make the substrate, which was actually something that I was kind of dreading. This was mainly because the area of the map where the sap trees are located is also strong Microraptor territory, and to be honest, to lose the challenge at this stage to a random Microraptor would have completely destroyed me mentally. Thankfully, the Microraptors appear to be on an all-inclusive vacation, and I successfully managed to gather some sap and return to base. At base, I now had all the resources to make a gas mask, so after making the substrate, I made as many gas masks as I physically could. The Rexes still needed levelling, so I set about doing that, murdering the spare babies that I had been keeping along the way. These Rexes were all named after my Twitch chat, so if you do want to get a dino named after you in these challenges, make sure to come on over and follow me on Twitch, link in the description below. I ended up going for 20k HP on the Rexes and the rest in melee. The HP stat is honestly probably overkill, considering the lack of pure DPS the Manticore possesses, but I wanted to be safe. The damage stat was pretty lacklustre also, but with the Gamma Manticore only having 100k health, I was confident that we had enough firepower. While I had retrieved the artifacts, before we could take on the boss, we had one final thing to do. We needed two talons of each wyvern to summon the manticore. So I headed out into the desert with my phyla, and a mate boosted pair of rexes in order to grab the talons. The task was simple, use the simple pistol to kite individual wyverns out of the pit, and then bring them back to the rexes who would slaughter them. I of course had put my gas masks on when it came to poison wyverns, and while the lightning wyverns certainly packed a punch with their lightning attack, especially when I managed to aggro a 185 over by accident, we did manage to successfully gather two of each talon. Returning to base one final time, I leveled some final rexes, slept through a couple of days to let them heal up, and was then all ready to go. The stage was set, and after all the blood, sweat and tears this challenge had produced, I was desperate that we wouldn't fail at the final hurdle. It's Gamma Manticore time, baby. It's Gamma Manticore time. Let's get it. Go on, Rory. Go on, Rory. Eleven damage. That's it, Rory. Solid effort. Ah, R ah, Rory's been knocked out. I'm a bit stuck, by the way, but I don't particularly want to... Go on, get it, Rexes. Oh my god, look how much damage it's... How much torpor it's doing. Oh, we're going to get asleep, Rexes, aren't we? I know if you chill around here, he doesn't do his torpor attack as much. Decent DPS, decent DPS. Go on, Rexes. Go on, keep going, Rexes. Oh no! Toxic Sunflower! Get it, Rexes! Go on, Rexes! Go on, Rexes. Come on, this is it. This is it. The greatest art challenge that YouTube has ever seen. This is it. The moment. No! Oh, no. Come on. That's it. Oh, come on. 13k. That's it. That's it, Rexes. On him. On him, Rexes. Come on. Come on. Please be it. 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 Oh, you're kidding me, man. 2.7k. I'm going to get a cheeky bite in myself. Don't do it. Don't do it. Ow. It's all right. I've got gas masks. That's why we have gas masks. Come on, Mexis. That's it. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. Come on. The greatest challenge, the greatest art challenge that YouTube has ever seen. Scorched Earth, 0.1 health, zero damage taken, has been completed. What a journey. What a journey.
If you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Depending on the reception this video receives, I am more than open to trying to beat other maps without taking damage as well, so let me know what map you guys would like to see next. Without further ado, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and take care guys. Bye bye.